gratitude to God. Gratitude to God is an attitude. It's an attitude of recognition for what we have enjoyed through all the blessings that God has given us. Let me say it again. It is an attitude to be grateful, to be thankful. It is an attitude, hallelujah, of recognition, hallelujah, for all the blessings that we have received in our lives. Now, that attitude can be directed towards two types of people. Of course, God, number one. But also people that God has surrounded us, and they have become a blessing in our lives. Amen. In reality, when I look at life in itself, I am so grateful that God has given me life. Can you imagine someone that takes his, their own life? You know what they're saying to God? They're actually slapping God in the face and saying, I don't want your life. That is a terrible thing to do. We as Christians, we need to be thankful. We as Christians, we need to be, have a heart full of gratitude for everything that he has done. There are so many reasons why we should be grateful to the Lord. We have an eternal purpose that God has put in our hearts, in our lives. That is something for us to be grateful for. We have a priesthood in our own ministry. You and I were called to reconcile the world to Jesus. Do you realize that you can bring eternal life to a person that is on his way to hell? Do you realize that? That is God's mercy upon us. He has made you a king and a priest unto the Lord. In other words, you and I have the power to bring a fallen world to a God of restoration, a God of salvation, a God of grace, a God that forgives, a God that gives eternal life, a God, hallelujah, that is everything and everything that anyone can expect. He is all things. That is what God has done for us. We should be grateful, hallelujah, that he has called us, hallelujah, to an eternal purpose, to eternal salvation, hallelujah, a priesthood. Not only, that, not only that, we should be grateful for every care that he has given us. He has taken care of us every single day of our lives. Amen. God wants us to be grateful. He wants his children to be grateful. There are many biblical texts that show us, that encourage us to be grateful. I'm going to ask my brother to put it up on the, on the screen for me, please. Hallelujah. Psalm 30 and verse 4. Would you please put it up for me? Hallelujah. There is so much to be thankful to the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything that we have, we owe it to the Lord. The Bible says every good gift comes from the Father of lights. Amen. We are the people that should be lifting our hands as we did today and worshiping the Lord and thanking him for everything that he's done. He's given us, hallelujah, eternal life. He has written our, 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 our names in the book of heaven. We didn't deserve it. It was done by his grace and by his love. For the Bible says we are saved by grace, to sit by faith. There is not from us. It is a gift of God. It's not by works that no one shall boast. So we are to worship and thank Thank the Lord and be grateful 24 hours a day. Amen. Praise God. Look at this. Sing unto the Lord, ye saints, and give thanks. Hallelujah. Should we give thanks? Yes, the Bible tells us to give thanks. Why? Because he's holy. And I was a sinner on my way to hell. Hallelujah. But this holy God who could not look upon sin, he made, he sent his son in the image of a man. Hallelujah. To take upon his son all the sins of the world. Should I be grateful? You bet I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God I have eternal life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalm 50 and verse 14. Let's read there too. Are we to be thankful? Yes. Let's not forget. Hallelujah. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows to the Most High. We are called to be a thankful people unto the Lord because he has done great things in our midst. Hallelujah. His 
goodness endureth forever. God is good and his mercies endureth forever. Let's read another verse. Hallelujah. Psalm 100 verse 4. Are we ought to be grateful to the Lord? The Bible encourages us. The Bible tells us, enter into his gates. With what? Thanksgiving, when you walk in this place, you have to have an attitude of gratefulness, an attitude, hallelujah, of thankfulness. Why? Because in this place, only the holy can stand in the midst of his place because God is holy and he accepts us. All kinds of faults. We are fault. Are we do, do we not fail? Hallelujah. But yet the Lord in his mercies, hallelujah, lets us come into his presence with thanksgiving in our lives lips amen let's look at psalm 105 and verse 1 hallelujah psalm 105 and verse 1 look what it says here it says i give thanks unto the lord call upon his name make known his deeds among the people hallelujah should we give thanks yes we have made the people to know the God that we serve. And because of that, we ought to be thankful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the New Testament. Ephesians. Hallelujah. Verse five, chapter 5 and verse 3 and 4. Would you put it up, up there for me, please? Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Look at this. Read it carefully. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named, not even named among his people. Look at this. Look at this. Hallelujah. As become its saints, verse 4, please. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather give what? Give thanks unto the Lord. God has not called us to be murmuring, to be talking about backbiting each other or talking about each other. That's not what God has called us for. When we enter into his gates, we enter to his gates to worship him, to give him praise, to give him the glory that he deserves. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Philippians 4 and chap chapter 4 and verse 4. Hallelujah. Let's continue reading. Why we should give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always. Even when things are wonderful. But even when things are really bad. Even when it looks like that. There is no way out. We've come to the end. Eh? Even when the enemy whispers in your ears. There's no way out. You're not going to make it. I remember one time at home when I first became a Christian. Hallelujah. The enemy came against me in a powerful way. I was alone at home. And you know, the enemy works in our, in our mind. This is where he works. This is what we, we does the battle. You understand what I'm saying? He begins to spew darts into our mind. And we begin to believe his lies. But the Bible says he's a liar. You don't have to believe him. He's a liar. Everything that he says is a lie. He has never been set in truth. Jesus said, you're a liar from the beginning. Do not believe the lies of the enemy. And the, the, that, that night, the enemy came to me in a very powerful way. And he began to tell me, you're not going to make it. You're going to fall. You think your Jesus is going to take care of you. You think your God will protect you. And I began to I began to call upon God. I said, God, please help me. Help me. Talk to me. Show me that you are able to take care of me. I will never forget when I opened the TV, there was a preacher. I had never seen him in my life. He, began, he stopped in the middle of his preaching and he pointed his finger at me from the TV and he said, young man. I went, wow. Is he talking to me? He said, young man, God is telling me to tell you that this there are angels around you. They encamp around you. And your enemy cannot touch you. But if they're able to go through the, 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 the angels, there is a Holy Spirit that's around you. And he can't go through them. And if that's not enough, the Son of God is with you. And if that's not enough, God the Father is with you. He's a liar. I have called you to be a conqueror. I will be with you. I will never forsake you. All you have to do is be thankful and give praise unto the Lord. Woo! Rejoice! 
Sometimes we don't feel like rejoicing. Sometimes it looks dark. Sometimes it looks like we're about to lose. Sometimes it looks like that the end is about to swallow us. But lift your eyes unto the heavens and give praise. Rejoice in the Lord because the one that's with you is greater than the one that's in the world. Hallelujah. Why should I give thanks to the Lord? Because he is good and his mercies endure it forever. A young man came to Jesus and said, good master, what must I do to have eternal life? Oh, Jesus said, wait a minute. The only one that's good is God. In other words, you're recognizing me that I am God. Hallelujah. Hey, church, if there's anyone that should be worshiping that should be thankful that should be grateful uh, but have a gratitude each morning and each day regardless of what's happening around us it is the church of Jesus Christ praise God hallelujah Philippians 4 and verse 4 look what it says there Look, rejoice in the Lord always. And, and say, I already told, told you that one, Philippians, right? Hallelujah. Let's go to another one. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Oh, glory. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus in the Lord, walk ye in him. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Rooted and built up in him, established in faith, and ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We are in Jesus, and every single moment of our lives, we have to be thankful. We have to be gracious. Hallelujah. God is a gracious God, and we have to be gracious. We have to be thankful every single morning. When we wake up in the morning, the first thing we should say, thank God for another day. Thank God that God's going to use me one more time. Thank God he's going to give me an opportunity, hallelujah, to point someone to Christ. Amen? But that's not the only one. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. Hallelujah. The 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. Look at what it says here. I know... It's easy to give thanks when the bank account is full of money. It's, it's, it's easy to give thanks when your son and daughter is healthy, when your husband is serving the Lord. But what about when your son doesn't want nothing to do with God? What about when your husband rejects the Lord? What are we supposed to do? What about when your boyfriend says, no, I don't want to serve the God that you serve? What about when your boss tells you, you better stop talking about this Jesus or else you're going to be fired? What about when those things happen? What are we to do? The Bible says, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Wow, sons and daughters of God, we have to be grateful to the Lord. God is a gracious God. And we ought to always be thankful to the Lord. Amen. Listen to me. God does not ignore ignores our, our sufferings. He knows what you're going through. He sees what you're going through. He has seen the tears that has flowed down your face your cheeks, the pain that you've gone through. The Bible says in Psalm 56 verse 8 that God, hallelujah, bottles, listen to this, look how, how gracious God is, how good he is. The Bible says that he bottles our tears. Do you understand that? In other words, he does not forget them. 
And the Bible says that it is written in the book of life. Everything that we do, hallelujah. God is not ignorant of your pain. He knows what you are going through. I don't care what you're going through, but I've got something for you. I've got the solution for you. I know that it doesn't, it doesn't feel right, but it, the Bible doesn't say that when you feel like praise and praise God. It is a command that we ought to praise the Lord always. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not ignorant of your pain. He sees what you're going through. He knows how hard it is. But he's promised you, I will be with you. I will never forsake you. I will always give you the victory because I have an eternal plan in your life. I have a purpose in your life. And there is nothing that will stay away from it. Nothing will do. I will conquer everything. I will do everything that I have promised you because my word is eternal. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we ought to pray and to cast all our cares upon the Lord for he cares for us. Stop carrying. God doesn't want you to carry it anymore. You see, you get tired when you begin to carry things that you are not able to bring solution to it. Do you understand? There is no solution. The only solution that there is is when you cast your cares upon the Lord. Hallelujah. In other words, throw it over to him. Begin to just worship God. Begin to believe. Oh, listen, gratitude has to do with faith. If you don't believe it, you're not grateful. If you don't believe it, you will not give thanks. If you don't believe it, you will never see God's eternal plan come to fulfillment in your life if you just do not believe and give him praise. Amen? Hallelujah. But unfortunately, unfortunately, is most of the time is contrary to that. In other words, instead of worshiping the Lord, instead of giving thanks and always be grateful to the Lord, we begin to murmur. It is very dangerous when we begin to murmur, when we can begin to complain. God has not called us to complain. I know some things are not going the way we like it, but God is in control. He's not asking you to like it. He's just working in you his perfect will. He has, hallelujah, a will that's perfect for your life. And sometimes some things are going to go against what you want, against the grain. It's going to feel like it's going to break. It hurts a lot but God is working what am I supposed to do I'm supposed to give thanks to the Lord Hallelujah. unfortunately the reality is when we are going through things we begin to murmur but that's very dangerous what are you saying pastor I'm saying that the Bible talks in Romans 1 they knew him as God, but did not glorify him as God and did not thank him. Listen, listen to this. They knew that he was God. In other words, this is someone that had an experience with him. Someone that knew the Lord. They knew him as God. Hallelujah. You can look in, in chapter 1 of Romans in, in verse 21. It says that you can read that at home. It says they knew him as God, but yet they did not glorify him as God. Hallelujah. Look at it. And did not thank him. Hallelujah. For the Bible says because of that, the Bible says that God gave these people over to a reprobate mind, a filthy mind, that they changed a natural course of humanity in other words man laid down with man woman laid down hey, hey when you begin to not give God glory when you stop to worship the Lord when you stop to give him the praise that he deserves when you stop recognizing who God really is when you say it's not going to work you know what you're saying God you're not really God when God says it's going to do it he's going to do it his word is eternal heaven and earth will pass away but my word will never pass if God says he's going to do it let me tell you something he's going to do it Woo! Woo! <laughs> uh, I don't know about you but I have some promises that God has promised me I don't see it being fulfilled yet but I know 
that the God that I serve is able to do beyond what I ask or what I can imagine. Why? Because he's God. And whatever he says, it will come to pass. Come on, give the praise to the Lord. Very dangerous. It can bring destruction. Because if I'm not thankful to the Lord by faith, I'm actually saying to you, Lord, you're not going to do it. The Bible says that a whole generation that came out of Egypt, listen to me, please. This is God's people. God took them out of Egypt. And a whole generation, because of their unbelief, hallelujah, because they did not glorify God for what he was. After, after God doing many, many miracles, many signs and wonders, can you imagine walking 40 years in the desert and your shoes grow and your feet? Can you imagine that your clothes never get old? Isn't that something to be thankful for? Can you imagine by a rock water comes pouring out? Can you imagine when you see your enemies all die at the sea? Can you imagine all of that? And yet the Bible says that a whole generation, because they did not give thanks, because they did not believe, because when you don't believe, you won't give thanks. The Bible says they all fell in the desert. Two people made it. Why? Because they were worshipers of God. Why? Because they were thankful to the Lord. Why? Because they believed God. My brother and my sister, stop looking at the circumstances and begin to look at God. God has called us to focus our, our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise God. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Very dangerous to stop worshiping God, to be thankful to the Lord. If we're not thankful, hey, you know what the Bible says? That when Jesus entered to Jerusalem, the Bible says that many were worshiping him. And they said, stop them. He said, if, I, if they stop, even the rocks will praise me and thank me. <laughs> Guess what? I'm not going to let no rock out praise the God. I'm going to praise more than the rocks. Why should we be grateful? Why should we be grateful to the Lord? The answer is Psalm 107 verse 1 says this, for the Lord is good. Can you put up there for me? Psalm 107 and verse 1. For the oh, Give thanks unto the Lord for he is. Why? Why should I give thanks to God? Because he's good. And everything that he does, he always does it for our good. Do you understand that? No matter what it looks like, no matter what the enemy says, I don't believe the enemy. I choose to believe the word of God. No matter what I'm going through, it may look dark. It may look like dismal. It may look like I'm not going to make it. It may look like I don't have no more strength, but I know what the Bible says, that when I'm weak, he is strong in me. Do you understand? When you're weak, you will see the power of God in your life. When you become nothing, God becomes something. When you disappear, God appears. Hallelujah! Oh! Give thanks unto the Lord! Why should I praise Him? Why should I give thanks unto God? Why should I wake up with a smile in my face when everything is bad? Because God is good. Yeah, but you don't know what I'm going through. If you knew what I'm going through, if you had the sickness that I have, you wouldn't be saying that. I probably wouldn't, but I'd be forcing myself to say it because I know that victory is what I pronounce. There is power in my words. There is life and there is death. And I know that I'd rather have life. Jesus said, I am life and I give it to you abundantly. <laughs> oh, why should I praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Porque é que eu devo de adorar a Deus? Why should I worship God? Because He took a nobody and made me somebody. Do you understand? You were worthless. 
You were a sinner. You were vile. You were filthy. You were dirty. Even the world did not recognize you. But God of glory looked down on a little town called Agua de Pau. Oh my God. For Brazilians, Agua de Pau, you know what that means? Someone that's a drunkard. And I guess I was drunk with sin. He looked down on that little town. He saw this little boy that many times looked to heaven and said, Oh, I know there's a God. <laughs> and I want to know who you are. <laughs> and he took this little boy, brought it to America. Hey, let me tell you something about America. There is no nation better than this nation. Hey, this is it, my friend. God has blessed this nation. And you know why? You know why? Because this nation has been a friend to Israel. Whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. Do not complain about this nation. People live for free. They complain about this nation. Am I right? Illegals come into this nation and they get taken care of. If you go to Brazil and you're sick and you don't have money, guess what, buddy? You better prepare the coffin because you're gone. They don't take you in. You understand? Go to Portugal. It's the same way. You think you're going to go to a hospital without money and they're going to take care of you. But I tell you one thing. In this nation, this nation, when you go to a hospital, you don't have money. You are even an illegal in this country. But yet they take you in. You know what that is? That is the goodness of God upon this nation. I loved my dad, but my dad was a big complainer. He would complain about this nation. I hated it. I wasn't even a Christian, but I hated it. Why? Because he was blind. He was ungrateful. Everything that I have today is because the God that brought me to America. <laughs> Why should I praise God? I'll tell you why. If that's not enough what I've given you, listen to me. God has a purpose in your life. And the more you praise him, and the more your thankfulness, God is able efficiently to work in you, easily to work in you, is purpose for your life. When you begin to murmur, God stops. When you begin to complain, God says, I won't do it. But when you give him praise, when you are thankful, God will move in your behalf. I know that it's not always easy to praise God. You think Pastor Manny is a superman? There are days that I don't even want to wake up. There are days that I want to leave the house. Why, Pastor? Because I look around and I see so many things against me. But I always think, but I have a great God. He promised me. He said he will never forsake me. He will never leave me. He says, I will always give you victory in my son, Jesus. Why should we be grateful? I'll tell you why we should be grateful. Go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. It says, we know. <laughs> and I like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And before it happens, you already know what's going to happen. So when you know that it's going to happen for your good, how should you act? You see, the minute you stop believing, in other words, if you are not believing that you know, the minute you stop believing, you know what you're saying? I don't believe it. I'm not going to worship God. Why should you worship God? Yeah, but you don't know what I'm going through, Pastor. You don't know the trials that I'm going through. Listen to me. Have you ever been thrown into a fairy furnace? No. Have you ever been thrown into the lion's den? No. Has someone put a gun to your head for you to say no to Jesus? No. And you think you got it bad. Eh? When I look at Daniel... When I look at those three young men, I say, shame on me. Hey, we are in a better position because we are living in the New Testament. 
We come face to face with God. They only knew the Lord through prophecies. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But we know God by the living word. And that living word is inside of me. Is inside of you. Hallelujah. Why should I praise the Lord? Because the Bible tells me all things, all things, no matter what it is. Hallelujah. Work. I'm just going to believe God I don't care what the devil says I don't care what the world says I don't care what demons say I'll believe the Lord Hey, raise your head put out your chest man hallelujah and be a man of God and a woman of God and in the face of adversity I know I said I know I said I know without a doubt I know that all things work for the good of those that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Why should I praise him? Because it's a command. It's a command. Always give thanks to the Lord. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. If somebody has been a blessing to you, take the opportunity to be thankful to that person. You don't know how many people that we have done everything for. And Celeste, and they turn their back on you. They don't even thank you. We ought to be thankful to God, but we also ought to be thankful to my brother and sister who has been a blessing in my life. Do you understand that? Don't wait until tomorrow. Do it now. Give thanks to that person and say to that person, thank you. You have been such a blessing in my life. Let us stand, please. Why should I praise God? I'll tell you why I should praise God. Because I have eternal life. Do, do you understand? That means you're going to live forever. And you're going to live forever in total joy. No more tears. No more pain. I'm not going to have a belly this big anymore. Thank God. I'm going to have a beautiful body. Fit as a fiddle. Hallelujah. I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm not going to be exactly like Jesus, but I will have a likeness of the Lord. The Bible says that when we are raptured, our bodies will be likened to the one of the Lord. Not exactly, but likened to. In other words, total perfection. Do you understand that? Why should you praise the Lord? Let me tell you something. Every single day, just because the fact that you have salvation, you should be praising the Lord. Because salvation was a heavy price to pay. And you and I could not pay it. We could not pay it. But there was one that came from heaven. The glory of heaven. The most wonderful person in heaven. For God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Is that so simple? Salvation is so simple. See, humanity makes it so hard to get to heaven. Makes it so hard to know who God is. The Bible says if you just repent and receive Jesus, you will know God. <laughs> Isn't that so simple? Why should I praise God? I'll tell you why should I praise God. Because everything in my life, God is in control of it. Do you understand that? Why should I praise God? Because my name is written in the book of life. Why should I praise God? I'll tell you why I should praise God. I'm not going to go to the white throne judgment. Do you understand that? If I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there as a judge. <laughs> Glory to God. Because you don't want to be there at the white throne judgment to be judged. But I want to be at the mercies of the seat of Christ.
we all receive all the rewards that I did it in Christ. He will repay everything to me. He's an awesome God. Bow your heads, please. If you want some prayer, perhaps you're going through something and you don't feel like praising God. But I'm here to tell you, do it anyway. You understand? One of our sisters at the church, she had this little mechanism in her heart because she had an irregular heartbeat. You know, you know who I'm talking about. Her name is Mary Lou. She came to me and said, Pastor, my heart is beating out of control sometimes. And it looks like I'm almost going to have a heart attack. She had this little gadget put there to see if everything was going to be all right. On a Thursday, the church prayed for her. She went back home. She believed in God. She said, Lord, I'm going to believe you. She took that little pacemaker and put it aside. She went to the doctor. The doctor said, your heart is beating perfectly well. Give God the glory. Why should I praise God? I'll tell you why I should praise God. Because through his stripes, I am healed. Bow your heads. I don't know what you need from God tonight, but God knows what you need. And what do you have to do? Just be thankful. Cast all your cares upon the Lord, for He takes care of you. And all things give thanks to Him. Even before you receive it, you give thanks because that's a way of saying I believe it God father I'm in your presence now and I come to you in the name of Jesus and through this name you have given me authority <laughs> to pray for the sick and they shall be healed you have given me the authority through this name to cast out devils you have given me the authority, Lord, that if I drink anything that will harm me, it will not harm me. You have given me the authority, Lord, to reach my hands upon people's lives and cast all the sickness out of them. Right now, I would like you to just, look, just go like this, friend, please, though. Just, just, just go like this. Go like this. Yeah, with your hand. 